Hi, I'm Mark Duncan, Clinical Director at LVI, and welcome to this episode of LVI TV. Researchers in Chapel Hill, North Carolina have been looking into how deep the oral systemic connection really goes, and what they found may not be much of a shock to you when you look at stereotypes, but it sure is surprising when they can actually bear it out with research. And that's that tooth loss and periodontitis might be linked to lower cognitive function in middle-aged adults. They analyzed over 11,000 participants between 45 and 64 according to tests of delayed word recall and digit symbol substitution and word fluency. In addition, almost 6,000 of the approximately 8,500 dentate patients had a dental exam to determine dental status, including the number of remaining teeth in their periodontal status. Turns out the edentulous patients had lower scores for all cognitive tests compared to the dentate patients, and of the 8,500 plus who were dentate, the ones with fewer teeth and bleeding gums were associated with lower digit symbol and word fluency test scores. Apparently, though, they were okay with word recall. Obviously, a lot of conclusions could be drawn. It's possible that flossing makes you smart, or that some of our gray matter is in our teeth. Oddly, there are stem cells in there, so maybe there's more to the name wisdom tooth than simply being around 18. I know it was hard to call me wise at the age of 18. Now, researchers felt that the association of lower cognitive scores with edentialism suggests that past oral diseases may be a risk indicator for cognitive decline. In other seemingly unrelated news, there may be an answer to the perplexing dumbness of missing teeth. Tokyo researchers have presented at a U.S. neuroscience meeting some insights about the scars that anxious patients may be dealing with as a result of dental treatment. Using a functional magnetic resonance imaging, they measured brain activity, and when looking at the left caudate nucleus in anxious patient, while they listened to sounds from dental instruments, they discovered some really interesting things happening. As compared to the neutral sounds, like the French horn or a pure tone, there were significantly lower amounts of activity in this area of the brain. In the non-anxious control group, there was no uptick in the left caudate nucleus, but rather increased activity in the area associated with auditory processing. Although it hasn't yet been published, one of the researchers is quoted as saying that the recent studies have indicated that the basal ganglia, including the caudate nucleus, may play a role in learning and memory functions, and the subjects in the fear group may therefore be receiving feedback from memories of the sounds of dental treatment. Maybe using up brain power with scary dental visits is interfering with cognitive function and making us dumb. Either way, we need to look for ways to mitigate periodontal infections, keep teeth healthy, as well as manage stress. Other studies have shown that nearly every single dental patient has an upregulation in stress, even if not stressed out by the appointment creates a physiologic sympathetic dominant presentation that's the worst possible scenario for keeping the visits simple and easy and helping our patients to heal. Now what sorts of things are you using in your practice to help to manage stress for your patients and make their experiences better? Please comment below on what you found most effective in helping to make your office visits easy. And don't forget to like us and subscribe to LVI TV. Thanks for watching. I'm Mark Duncan.